everyone, and welcome to Libby Exploring the App. If you watched our previous video, this is going to take off right where that one ended. On our other video, we walked through the steps on how to download the Libby app, as well as a few reasons why the Libby app is so helpful. This time we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into Libby, how to work it, and why exactly it's the useful app. Libby is one of the most user-friendly apps out there, but it can be a little bit daunting um, if it's the first time you've ever used it. Libby is an app for every reader with options for ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more. Not to mention that Libby is compatible with Alexa, Google Hub, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Sonos speakers for all you audiobook listeners. You also have the option of downloading the entire book or audio file so you can enjoy your book offline and without using any data, either on the app, your Kindle, or even your desktop computer. Libby can be used across all devices with the same account and syncing is just as easy. All you have to do is go over to the shelf. I think it's that one. Yes, this little button down here, it looks the exact same on um, Apple. Up here, actions, there you go. And tap synchronize shelf and it's done. Your shelf is now synchronized with every device you use Libby on. There's also the option to read borrowed books on your Kindle. Just find a Kindle compatible book you want to read, tap borrow, and then select read with Kindle. It will automatically pull up your Amazon account for you to log into your account and connect with you. However, the book is still alone, which means you have only you only have it for however many days you requested it. Alternatively, you could go to your shelf and see if any of your books are Kindle compatible. If it is, there is the option to read with Kindle, then repeat the steps above. If not, then it is not available for reading on the Kindle. They actually have a tag that you can specifically search for books on Kindle. It's sitting right here. Explore with books, Kindle. All these books that popped up are now Kindle compatible, are all Kindle compatible. Another bonus to Libby is that there are absolutely no late fees because all books are returned automatically. And if there is a book that you just aren't done with, renewing is simple. First, you can change the loan period for either seven or 14 days. Uh, that's a fun. All right, you can borrow. See, you can, here's 14 days or seven days. And you can hit borrow and you can either read with Kindle, sending it, see it opens up the Amazon page. And then from here, it's like, see, there's my book. You can go to manage loan. You can read with, you choose Kindle or the app. You can go to return it early, the reading journey, shared tar title. You can renew it. I can't renew it. I just checked it out uh, about three days before it's due on the 10th. I can come back and I can renew it for another 14 days if no one is waiting for it. Sometimes the renewed loan button isn't available and you'll see a placeholder instead. This simply means that another user in system has requested the book and you will need to get back in line if you want to continue reading or read it again. Alternatively, it might be because you were trying to renew it too early like I was just doing. It has to be a few days before your loan is due before renewing becomes an option. Libby also has the ability to keep a timeline of your reading. The timeline button is easy to find and you'll see a lot of titles you've borrowed, placed on hold, renewed, or returned from your library. However, the timeline is specific to the device you're currently on. You can easily see all the books you've borrowed with the borrowed tag. This leads us to another cool feature of Libby, tagging. Tags are a flexible way for you to organize your books in Libby and you can use them to make a list of books you want to read, which ones are your favorites, which ones you want to recommend, and more. You can find all your tags available on your shelf, and from there, you can filter by format, rename, or even delete the tag. Here you've got tags, and it tells you it's like you can have a wish list, you can have books you enjoy, didn't enjoy, recommendations, share with friends. So this is my borrowed tag. It's the only one I've borrowed. And then he's like, would you like to apply this tag to the one borrowed title in your timeline? Yes. There you go, it's now tagged borrowed. You can tag every title from your library or create as many tags as you want. This is the library homepage button. This is the search button if you're looking for something specific. Go back to search. Say you want to read a book about dragons. There you go, dragon books audiobooks. It'll actually tell you how long the audiobooks are. Um, you can play a sample, you can read a sample, you can tag when you go into the book. Uh, it tells you what it's currently tagged in, fiction, thriller. You can even go back to 
on the library page. Here's guides, kids books, teen books, mystery books, business books, cozy mystery books they currently have going on. The 2x2 reading list is available, the Texas Blue Bonnet Award nominees, the Lone Star reading list, uh, always available books for audio. Edgar, the Edgar World for Best Novel is currently up there. They've got romance filters, they've got must read mysteries, biographies, urban fictions. It just keeps going. It doesn't really stop. Oh, it does. I found the thing. Something Wicked This Way Comes, which are all horror titles. I won't be reading any of those. But yeah, Libby is definitely one of those apps that needs to be used more because it's so good and it's so much fun. But that's all from me. So y'all have fun reading, reading on Libby.